For, for me, it was uh, in in second year. I had a I had a professor of uh, uh, so so where I went to school. The applied math department had all of the theoretical physicists. Um, so so they often taught math courses and not physics courses. And in my second year, uh, maybe it was like the third calculus I took, maybe the fourth one. Um, I I had a theoretical physicist for 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 my professor, and um, and one of his office hours, I went in and I was like, you know. And like this is this is not the same person from the store. Like this is the ba basically a common theme for me is that I like I will go in and pick people's brains all the time about what they think is the best best path forward because you know I I know that they know more than me and I just want to sample sample opinions until I can come to some type of uh, consensus uh, uh, so sometimes and and particular in, in particular I was really interested throughout my entire undergrad about how to plan and structure my undergrad so that I'd come into grad school with the best tools uh, to solve physics problems. And uh, so I went in and I asked him uh, the same question that I asked the professor from the, uh, from, the, uh, from the story at the beginning of the video. And he said, um, he, doesn't take, he doesn't take grad students that don't have extensive uh, numerical background because he doesn't have numerical background. And then there are just... There are just a lot of questions that he can't do without uh, people with right. numerical backgrounds. So, like as of right now, he wouldn't consider someone who didn't have extensive experience uh, in computational uh, in, in computational physics. So at that point, I was like, okay, I need to basically be taking some type of computational course uh, every semester. And luckily, that's the the applied math department there was like you know there's th theoretical physicists mathematical biologists and then people who worked on uh, numerical analysis type problems and of course there I'm I'm probably forgetting uh, some subjects there but um, yeah so so I was definitely in the right place to to take that advice um, seriously and I definitely I definitely appreciate the sentiment that you want to be able to just answer the problems you're interested in, right? Like when you're doing analytical work, oftentimes you have to say, can I answer this problem? No, okay, next problem. Can I answer this problem? No, okay. Um, or at least like for, for mathematical physics, when, when you're talking about, you know, writing theorems and, and, and things sure. like that. Sometimes you just don't have the tools, right? But like, I, I, I don't want to have to do that. I want to say, I want to, I want to learn more about this. Um, and I and I want like so I'll come at it with whatever like I, I want to I don't have the skills to do this per uh, as of right now there's many things I want to learn new numerical techniques new analytical techniques um, and that 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 feeling will probably never end I'll probably die being like oh I should read this textbook for <laughs> for, for uh, these techniques right but um, yeah there's always more to learn I think you know um, one one piece of advice maybe to undergrads is follow follow your passion right this is one of these pieces of advice that never people never tire of saying to people who are sort of at a younger stage than they are but i really think you know the if you want to love what you're doing and you want to sort of have the most unique and um impactful experience i i think you've got to just pursue the things you're passionate about with abandon you know and um it's good to be pragmatic. It, obviously, some people that really works for them. You know, thinking about trying to study a certain area because it's going to be useful later on. I know that when I was getting into numerics, uh, a lot of folks would say things like, "Well, you know, that'll be great for a, a job in industry after or something along these kinds yeah. of lines." Well, that's, that, that's, that's what our that's what our supervisor said to said to me. Yeah, so our supervisor uh, shared that, and I, you know, I think our supervisor is quite correct in that. But I think also, you know, if you do analytical field theory you know you're gonna be able to get a job in industry after it's gonna be fine you know yeah you know choose to do the things that you want to do because you see them as valuable for you maybe that's because of their professional gain and that's fine but really i think prioritize that don't don't be um don't don't feel like you have to sort of cleave to the oh you have to study x and you have to study y and these are the these are the ways to do to do good work it's important you feel passionate about the work you're doing that you feel curious about it or else you're going to have a hard time maintaining the motivation
uh, especially in graduate school, I think. Yeah, that's uh, that's that, that that's some good advice. Uh, so Yule said it's actually insanely hard to get into a field. Known papers, jargon, analytical slash computa computational techniques, important results. Nobody can tell you all of that. That is that is honestly so mm -hmm. true. There is such a barrier to getting involved into into questions that you want uh, to potentially contribute to. That's why you know, I mean, like you know, choice of choice of uh, supervisor. Is, is obviously you know extremely important one for you know getting into the field you want to you want to do research in but also you know s someone who's you know willing to sit sit down with you and make sure that you get exposed to the information uh, that you should be uh, exposed to so that instead of being someone that you just do you do work for them and you solve problems for them actually building you up into someone who who is aware of all the jargon and who is aware of all the important results that are going on. Yeah, absolutely. You you need a supervisor who makes you feel comfortable to uh, ask ask questions. Yeah, and and I see that seems sort of straightforward, but like it's that's not always the case, which is unfortunate about uh, academia.